Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, August 25th, and it's time to go on the record. Representative Lori Trahan, a first-term congresswoman looking to make a long-term impact. Her priorities as the 2020 election cycle shifts into high gear. Joe and I, we speak uh, regularly, and uh, we will continue to talk. But are they talking to each other or at each other? How the potential Ed Markey, Joe Kennedy Senate race is already getting intense. To impeach or not to impeach, we pose the question. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to OTR. And I pause when I say this, on this last Sunday in August. Oh. Where to go already? I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center Five's political reporter Janet Wu, and we're joined this morning by Congresswoman Lori Trahan. She's a Democrat. She's representing the third congressional district. This is her first term on Capitol Hill. Her committee assignments include armed services, education, and labor. She's a graduate of Georgetown University. And when I say it's the last weekend in August, I mean school's right around the corner, right? Oh, I know. My nine-year-old goes back next week, and my youngest starts kindergarten. Starts right kindergarten. After... <laughs> yes. Oh, and how goodness. fortunate that you're actually home and oh. you can be with her on her very first day. Yes, this job comes with a few blessings things and this is one of them. Well, let's talk about things that perhaps are not less of a blessing. Let's put it that way. Um, the latest political elephant in the room, the president has pushed into the arena. He says if Jews vote for Democrats, yeah. they're showing great disloyalty. What's your response to the president? It's just such an irresponsible uh, and divisive thing to say. And, uh, you know, I think the, the president will be surprised uh, that the American public is smarter than this. They're not going to fall. Uh, for his divisive rhetoric. Uh, you know, the support of Israel um, has never been a partisan issue. Uh, I was just there uh, last week, uh, and I was there with 41 of my freshman colleagues, 32 of my Republican freshman colleagues. Were you there when the president released this tweet no, and said this? No, no. Uh, I was there uh, the week prior, and so I was, su I was surprised, uh, you know, because we were able to meet with government officials and NGOs on the ground about the importance of our uh, our alliance our, uh, and Israel's security. And, and, you know, it's not a partisan issue. I'm not, I'm not sure why the president's making it one. Which sort of leads to the next question. What's the latest count on impeachment? And do you think that by the time you go back in a couple of weeks, do you think that the numbers will have changed from when you left D.C.? Well, they have definitely changed uh, from when we uh, 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 left on district work period. Um, you know, I know that there's been dozens who have come out um, as a result of possibly being home uh, in their districts, doing town halls, speaking with their constituents. And so I'm not sure what the latest number is. I think we're up to about that 128, 130 mark. Um, and I think there'll be more to come. Do you think, do you read any signals from the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, that she's moving towards more, perhaps starting the process or not yet? You know, it's funny when you see uh, Chairman Nadler t uh, sort of frame the hearings that are, are scheduled for September. Um, he sort of frames them around uh, these are uh, part of impeachment proceedings, right? I mean, I think everyone is sort of uh, thinking that these investigative uh, uh, hearings that we're having across committees are all going to contribute to an eventual impeachment. The, the next item I want to talk about is the president is also talking about holding immigrants crossing the border even longer. So the, so the conversation is, does this give Democrats any more leverage with their Republican colleagues to do something, or does this remain a stalemate on Capitol Hill? What is your, what is your thought? You know, this, uh, I, I, as you know, I was down yeah. at the border. I went down on that, um, that uh, visit with the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Uh, and this is, um, you know, it was just on the heels of uh, the independent uh, commission going down and, uh, and writing reports on what they saw. And, uh, and we were able to validate, you know, by, by reporting what we saw. Uh, we have to uphold uh, the Flores uh, settlement agreement. That is, it's such an important in terms of which us says, having standards. Which says? Which basically, you know, puts a cap on how long you can detain children and applies um, some standards around, uh, uh, around holding people in our custody. Uh, as part of that, you know, when we broke um, in, in July, uh, we passed a bill, uh, Representative Ruiz's bill, on applying more humanitarian standards to how we treat people who are in our custody. And when we go back, we have more to do in terms of changing the culture at CPB uh, and basically just putting some accountability in place. Uh, I actually introduced a bill. It was the um, the Migrant Death Accountability Act, because Congress needs to be informed when someone uh, dies in our custody, and we also need to prompt an automatic hearing so we can get to the root cause of that. It shouldn't be happening mm -hmm. on our watch. So after El Paso and Dayton, President Trump talked about possible broader um, background checks. 
But after a meeting this past week with the NRA, um, he's sort of backing off again. So is it fair to say there's little potential of any movement on this uh, federally? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm curious uh, and hopeful. Uh, you know, public opinion matters right now, especially um, as it pertains to something as table stakes as background checks. 90% uh, of the public want them. I think the, the burden is right now on Mitch McConnell and the Senate to debate what we've already passed in, in the House. And, you know, I, I understand the power of the NRA. I think we're confronting it at this very moment. But I remind myself and people I talk to that, you know, in my lifetime, I watched the tobacco lobby go from the most powerful lobby to virtually uh, negligible at this moment. And it, and it was because of the practices of advertising addictive tobacco pro products to children. The NRA is at that precipice at this moment. And I think public opinion and public pressure is what's actually going to tip the scales in our favor. So you do see it sort of going over to yes, the other I side? Yes, I do think, uh, I think Republicans in the Senate are, are under a lot of pressure to take that vote. Um, and so I do believe that um, they're going to be forced. They're going to be forced to address this. Let, let's talk about life in your district. It's almost a year since the Columbia gas explosions ripped apart significant portions yeah. of your district. So how happy are you with, with their progress to date? Do you feel that they've adequately compensated their customers and they're confident that it won't happen again? Because, you know, this, this was shocking a year ago. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we do think long and hard about that as we approach the, the year anniversary. We, uh, um, a lot has been, has been done um, to make many of the businesses whole, but there's still work to be done. Our office is still working with some of those more complicated cases to make sure that they're moving through the system and they're, they're, um, they're getting adjusted and, and, and paid. Uh, I will say that there's also an, uh, an enormous effort right now to get local uh, families and neighbors and the community back to supporting these businesses. There's a great uh, marketing campaign. You'll see it on billboards on 495 to rock the register in North Andover, Andover and Lawrence so that we can get and, and see sales go back to levels of, uh, of earlier in 2018. You know, the most important thing is that we make sure this never uh, happens again. I, you know, I was fortunate I worked with Senator Markey mm -hmm. on the uh, Lionel Rondon pipeline safety. I was going to say, this safety. claimed a life. It I did. Mean, yeah. I, I mean, absolutely. things are one thing, but this claimed a life. You bet. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's important for us to honor uh, that life by ensuring that this never happens in another community across the country. Um, so we are fighting hard to make sure um, that bill gets passed. Uh, it's actually... It's, it's gone through many of the legislative hurdles. In fact, uh, Senator Markey called me uh, just two weeks ago to say it's gone through the markup on his committee in the Senate, which is a great sign. Uh, but those are uh, standards that need to be in place because it's not se sexy sometimes to talk mm -hmm. about the things mm -hmm. that are underground mm -hmm. and put a spotlight mm -hmm. on that. But those are precisely the things that we need to maintain so that uh, things like this never happen again. We will, we will want to talk to you about Ed Markey a little bit later. But first, I want to ask you about the census. Um, a lot of immigrants in your district. Yes. Uh, right now, President Trump d looks like he's not going to be able to get the question of citizenship yes. on the census. But are you fearful that a lot of your constituents won't respond and potentially Massachusetts could lose a congressional seat if that happens? So I'm, I'm interested in everybody filling out the cen census because in communities like Lawrence and Lowell and Haverhill, it is so important that they get the federal dollars and the, the, the services that they require. Um, so that's why we need an accurate count. And we've been doing rallies uh, in those cities to make sure that people understand that this is a, a confidential document, it's private, so it's safe for you to fill out, and it's simple, and how important it but is. But you are worried that there are people that will, after hearing what's been going on, will yeah, not respond. It is a concern. It's why we're going to put boots on the ground, and we're going to support the, uh, the local field office that the Census Bureau has set up in Lawrence uh, to ensure that people feel comfortable filling out the form. You know, in, in 2010, we had 80 percent of the district filling out that form, uh, but we're shooting for uh, 100 percent this year. Right? Yes. Speaking of forms, mm -hmm. I happen uh. to have a, a form <laughs> look at the look on her inside face. my jacket pocket. <laughs> the first time pocket. we got a crown from her, all show. Here we go. No. It's a, it's a long one, by the way. Oh, it's look four it, look pages. I, I, no, you can't look at that. I was never good at that. <laughs> all, right. all right, so this is the pop quiz, and, and you are a member of the Lowell High School Athletic Hall of Fame, earning volleyball scholarship to Georgetown. So let's start with a volleyball-related question. Uh. 
In the 1920s, a game in which a ball is thrown over a net and caught rivaled volleyball in popularity. There's a multiple choice on the screen. Was it called blitz ball, nukem ball, or bullet ball? Oh, that's a good Back one. Back in the 1920s. 20s. A, B, or C? It was a predecessor. We'll say blitz ball. It was nukem ball, the <laughs> second team sport to be played by women in the United States after basketball. It was also invented by a woman, by the way. All right, and the next question. How about a Georgetown question? This Oscar-nominated actor is a Georgetown grad and is the voice of Rocket Raccoon in the Guardians of Galaxy movies. Is it Tommy Lee Jones, oh. Ed Harris, or Bradley Cooper? Oh, Bradley Cooper. I was going to say, <laughs> the key here is a Georgetown grad. It is Bradley Cooper. And he, he did you meet Bradley Cooper at Georgetown? Yes, yes, I did. I did. He was a couple of years younger than me. Wonderful. <laughs> now, we're going to hear the story in the commercial, and we're going to take a break. <laughs>